welcome to this week's episode of MSU Inside Out. Tonight, today is our centennial show, so it's going to be really exciting. We'll be looking over the last hundred years of Minot State. I'm your host, Jamie Council. And I'm your co-host, Andre Livingston. We have a great show today, Jamie. Oh, I'm so excited. We got, I'm talking to Gary Leslie, who is dean of women, just he Great, uh, great. You're talking to Garnet Cox, but uh, Garnet, Kyler's talking to Gary Kyler, There we go. I got to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, it's my okay. Own it's self. okay. Today, <laughs> today's your second show. I so guess. Okay. Thank you for filling in for Mariah. <laughs> She's sick and unable to make it. But yes, yeah, yes. Uh, a lot of great interviews. I'm talking great to a doctor interviews. here on campus. And then our sports guy's going to be looking over the history of Minot Sports. And then. Um, uh, Bridget's going to be talking about Power of 100 and what uh, people on campus have been doing about that. And then also is going to be talking about a legacy uh, here on campus as far as name goes. So Bridget, do you have more on that story? I absolutely do and let's dive right in. Minot State University took a vote in 8 1925 that would change the school forever. Andre Livingston reveals more on this lasting legacy. We see our mascot, the beaver, everywhere we look on campus. But it was not always so. It was not until the state normal school achieved collegiate status and became Minot State Teachers College that it was even considered. Well, from 1913, that, that fall, the first year, all the way to 1924, we didn't have a mascot. In December, we got word uh, that we'd been approved to become a college. And a young lady named Pauline Marion Roach, she was a freshman stepped up and said, you know, if we're going to be a college, look at what the other colleges are doing. We need a mascot. And everybody was kind of like, yeah, 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 that sounds really good. Maybe we, that's something we can talk about. And she said, well, I've already given it some thought. And she said, the beaver. She says, well, it's common to the region. And again, you got to go back in time. It's 100 years ago. And there were a lot of beaver around a lot of, in the lakes. And she said, it's a very industrious animal. Uh, it's clean, it's a hard worker, it's a builder. And she said, that's kind of descriptive of what we had to do for the past few years to get the, the campus ready. A vote was taken and the beaver was initiated into our college tradition. Following soon after, basketball, football teams had the beaver name on everything. The beaver has remained a part of campus life until this day. MSU still cherishes their mascot as a symbol of hard work and loyalty. And Jamie, I know that uh, you have someone special with here with you tonight or today. And uh, I do. Uh, this is an associate professor here in information tech. So um, let me welcome Dr. Christy Berg here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Jamie. Not a problem. So, like I said, she is a associate professor in uh, information business tech. So you have uh, been in Minot your whole life. So that's kind of crazy to think that you still absolutely love it here. I mean, it's a great place to be. So you got your bachelor's and master's here at Minot State. What kind of led you uh, to want to come to Minot State? The, the beginnings of your career, I should say. Back in the day. Back yes. in the day. <laughs> um, as a student, I enjoyed the atmosphere at Minot State University and um, came back for my master's degree and decided I might want to teach here. And so I started pursuing that avenue and was finally hired after I pursued them. And 13 years later, I'm still here and plan to be here for a long time. Just enjoy the environment, enjoy the people. MSU is a big family. Yeah, they definitely are. I know I love it here. Um, I'm kind of showing off my MSU pride today. I'm on the soccer team, so I definitely know the family even though I'm not from here. Right. And then kind of looking at your time while you're at Minot State, so that would have been a 91 to 95 was your undergrad. Bachelor's, yes. Your bachelor's, yes. Um, essentially looking at it now, how far the campus has come as far as events go, but what was it like when you were here, a student, walking the campus? The campus was so different. It even looked different. Um, a lot more trees on the campus. It was hard to see across campus. So that's <laughs> something that I like. That was a controversial thing, all the taking down of the trees. But I like that the campus is more opened up, um, more visible. I've enjoyed um, working with Dr. Fuller and his visioning and his plans for the campus. And um, it's fun to see it evolve. The campus is um, 
revised, re-energized, refreshed. Yeah. Um, the new buildings, of course. We didn't have a student wellness center yeah. when I was a student here. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, second year opening. I've actually yes. worked there since the beginning. And yeah, great, uh, great atmosphere in there. I know I had Fuller on a couple weeks ago and just talking about how far they've come as far as the building wise. Yeah, huge come. strides. It's fun to see. When I was a student here, we referred to MSU as a suitcase college because most students went home evenings and weekends. But the level of student activity has greatly picked up, and it's fun to be a part of that on the faculty side now. Yeah, so um, tell me a little bit about, you know, coming from, you know, there to now. What do you do exactly in the college within the business information, um, business information Technology, system? yep, technology, business, yeah, bit, the BIT all, department, just business a lot info of tech. technology. Exactly. So. I teach database theory and application classes and virtual business in management information systems, both undergrads and graduates. MIS is an exciting field. There are so many different job opportunities from banking to healthcare wow. to um, social media, marketing, advertising. So um, technology is a booming field. It's yeah. fun to be a part of. Yeah, and so I know some people that have had classes with you and all good things. Oh, and thank you very much. Just talking to you, I know your uh, daughter said that she wants to go to Minot State, so that's exciting that you know you kind of it left a good impression of my not stayed in that yes. legacy. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And um, I haven't had a class with you, but maybe I'll see you around campus. Sure, sign up in the spring. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> thank you for joining me. So, um, now we're going to go to our live interview uh, with Kyler at the Dome, who's talking to Gary Leslie about a little bit of athletic history. Kyler? Thanks, Jamie. You came here to coach at Minot State. But he became a lot more than that. Joining me today is Gary Leslie. Thanks for joining us today, Gary. Hey, no problem. So this year marks the 100th year of Minot State. And we're looking back on people and things that made a pretty big impact on the university. And we thought, who better than you? Because you were such a staple in making women's sports known. So what were some of the struggles of women's sports before it was kind of embraced by the public? Ooh, that's a loaded question. By the way, I wasn't here when the university first opened. <laughs> I, I've been accused of coaching Moses, but I didn't do that. Well, to give you a little idea, I uh, s coached the uh, first girls high school uh, track team in the state of North Dakota that won the state at Minot High. And uh, at that time, you, the girls couldn't get on the track. So we practiced out in the fairgrounds uh, on the gravel road and things like that. Uh, eventually it got a, a little better. Okay, uh, you were talking about how you won at Minot High. You were at Minot High, then you went to Minneapolis, then you came back to Minot State. Was it pretty easy for you to come back? Well, yeah, it really was. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to St. Cloud and, and get out of education and do some supervising of student teachers. And I thought, no, I just want to teach. That's what I really want to do. I never did want to coach. <laughs> but I always believed that, that good coaches were good teachers. And so the two kind of went together. And when I was got kids started in... Um, Gymnastics, we used to travel around the state, take our equipment, take over physical education programs, and then bring those kids from those towns into our, our entertainment at the halftime of ball games. And so the people would say, hey, those kids are our kids. Why don't we have this program? So that one thing kind of led to another, and uh, I was asked to come up here. They had a program here before I came one year, and... Uh, I took it over the next year, and uh, about two years later, we got a conference going, and the colleges and universities were all together, uh, NDSU and, and uh, UND were in our program. We call the college and university state championships. Okay, so when you took over, you were basically you were the coach for the most of the gymnastics program, and you actually won... North Dakota Coach of the Year in 81 and 85. What was it like to receive those awards? <laughs> well, I always said and still believe that a coach is only 10% of the, of the program. If you don't have the 90% of the, of the program, which are people who are going to perform for you, it just doesn't work. So 
I don't think I won that award. I think they did. Those gals won all 13 college and university championships. And I think they won 50 out of the 55 uh, individual championships, and they tied for three of those. So. Okay, and that's Gary Leslie. He was an innovator in women's sports here at Minot State. And thanks for joining us again today, Gary. Hey, no problem. I enjoyed it. Good. Uh, so we've been talking a lot about sports. And Jesse, I know you got a little bit of sports for us, so why don't you tell us a little more? All right, thank you, Kyler. Now it's time to talk a little bit more about the history of sports, like Kyler just said. It was a long road to get to the NCAA Division II for Minot State, and Chris Price has more on the story. 100 years. Tradition and excellence. Minot State University started as a normal school and is now competing at the NCAA Division II level. It has been a long time coming. You know, back in the day, um, really I think they started mainly with uh, sports like basketball and, and track and field uh, were some of the first activities. Um, and they've grown, uh, obviously, adding football and, and uh, a lot of the, the female sports have come a long ways just in the last uh, you know, 40 years, especially with Title IX. Um, they had some early female sports, but uh, female uh, athletics didn't really get going till, uh, in full force till the early 70s after Title IX. With sports growing at Monmouth State, more facilities were needed to ensure advancement of the athletic department. And the most important facility for Monmouth State has been the Dome. The dome opened uh, in 1981, so just a little over 30 years ago, and uh, obviously we've made some nice improvements, but uh, before that they competed over in Swain Hall, um, before it was renov renovated obviously, I think that was opened in uh, the early 50s, and, uh, and before that they actually completed, uh, they had a gym uh, in, in Old Main, in the basement of Old Main, where they com competed for a lot of games. Prior to that, I believe they competed downtown and at the Armory. So, uh, long history of, uh, of athletics and tradition there. It can be fun to think about the past, but Minot State Athletics has a bright future. The Beavers have achieved a hockey national championship, Northern Sun Women's Soccer Tournament Championship, and a men's individual golf championship, all in the last year. We're pretty new in this Division II stuff. We want to obviously establish ourselves and, and continue to grow there. We're in a great conference in the Northern Sun Conference, and we just need to continue to, uh, to build on that, um, build the excitement around uh, Minot State and Minot State Athletics, and I think that'll come with, with time here and, and continued hard work. So looking forward to the next, uh, next century of Beaver Athletics. Reporting for MSU Inside Out, I'm Chris Price. For more information about Beaver Athletics, you can visit msubeavers.com. Now, Andre, it's kind of a bummer um, for a lot of us. We don't have time for a fantasy football show this week. <laughs> but there's always time for fantasy football. There's always time. There's a game tonight, um, Vikings and Redskins. Vikings, Redskins. So uh, what do you got for us? I got for you the combination of RG3 to Jordan Reed, the tight end, is going to be phenomenal tonight. And Adrian Peterson on the Vikings <laughs> side, I'm telling you, Adrian Peterson is always the best start. He is just a free. You can never go wrong. You can never go wrong. Yep, yes. So. Yeah. So, yes, everybody's sad that we don't have a fantasy show, but we still have a lot coming up on our show. So um, we still have a lot to look forward to with the history of Minot State looking through this past 100 years. And then also we're going to touch on a little bit of the winter weather. Hopefully not coming up, but we'll see. We'll be back after the break. Thank you to our underwriters. Walmart. At Walmart, you can save money so you can live better. MSU Hockey Club, the 2013 ACHA Men's Division I National Champions. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. Western Pacific Crane and Equipment, the authorized dealer for Manitowoc, Grove, and National Crane. The Center for Extended Learning. Our mission is to provide flexible, accessible, and quality lifelong learning opportunities. All-American Trophies. Established in 1983, located on South Broadway for all your trophy and screen printing needs. The Pita Pit. Sandwiches, soup, and salad. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Art Main. Women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located on Main Street. Midwest Oil Jobs. 
brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest under one roof to connect like-minded individuals. Creative Property Management. Over 45 years of experience in managing properties and helping tenants find the right home. MSU Athletic Department, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Red and Green, Monarch State University's official student-run newspaper. Digital Office Center, offices located in Minot and Bismarck, provides the complete line of Xerox equipment, supplies, and services. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Be seen, be heard on the Alshire, Black Box, and Amphitheater stages. MSU Theater, where we tell the world's stories. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibitions and art events. Beyonce Bridal, located downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. NDAD, help for people with disabilities and health challenges. Pepsi of Minot, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas of Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, Botno, and Hedinger. Rick's Jewelry, where you'll shimmer and shine. Watney Realtors, a full service real estate agency handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located in the Beaver Ridge Plaza. RL specializes in creating custom-made vintage mod children's and baby clothes. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream. Good time to be together. KCJB AM, 910 AM, Minot News and Information Station. AIZZ FM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. 97 Kicks FM, today's hot new country. KZPR FM, Minot Rock Station, 105.3 The Fox. KMXA FM, Minot's best music mix, Mix 99.9. SOS Image, improving the health and self esteem of every client. Grizzlies, the place for wood fried food, friends, and family. We're back, Channel 19, MSU Inside Out. And the first half of the show was just really great, talking about the strides Minot State has made to improve and just in better just the campus just, life and yeah, the community as a whole. Being, yeah, better, better people overall, better, um, just better everything. Exactly. And I know that this year being our centennial year, the campus has done what's called Power of 100, which is a great way to get involved in the community and get uh, the campus caring about the community. Yes. I know Bridget has more on that story. I do, and there's nothing better to like have the community get involved. So mm -hmm. let's take it away. Minot State University has a long history of community service. To celebrate MSU's 100 years of service, we want to engage everyone to give back to the community by being part of the Power of 100 Service Challenge.
Centennial Service Challenge will continue through April 15th of 2004. And a certain group's donation has more visible impact than others. The Alumni Board of Directors wanted to give something back to the university that would be lasting. They donated a 10-foot beaver statue earlier this year as a representation of their experiences they've had on campus. By accepting this challenge, their legacy will live on. There are over 40 clubs and organizations that have completed a Power of 100 service challenge. For your chance to participate, check out minotstateu.edu. And joining us now with Dre is someone who's been with the university for over 30 years. So Dre, tell us more. Yes, joining us today is surrogate parents, mother superiority, <laughs> and frontier sheriff. Right. Garnett Cox, thanks for having us. Thanks for uh, joining the show today. Thanks for inviting yes. me. Yes. Now, you are a former dean of students um, in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, just talking about, before you joined Minot State, tell me about your uh, daily life. How did you become hired at Minot State? Well, I had been at uh, three other schools of uh, higher ed, and this was my way of traveling. I couldn't afford to travel with unless I worked along the way. So. Um, I just, I'd never been to North Dakota, and so there was a job opening, and I heard about it, and so I had uh, two telephone interviews from, I was back in New York State then, and then I got hired over the phone, mm -hmm. sight unseen, and I hadn't, and I'd never been to North Dakota, so I thought, so this would be an interesting uh, experience. That's great. Now you said you were you were born in New York, right. and coming from New York, you traveled uh, here and there. Where are some places you traveled? Well, I spent I taught at um, Pine Manor Junior College in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Then I went to uh, Grinnell College for one year on a fill-in for a gal that was going on a sabbatical. Then I went to Lake Forest College for a year. Then I went back to Grinnell uh, for three years in Iowa. Mm. And then I decided I would move again and uh, go into administration and student personnel and the job opened up in Minot, North Dakota where I'd never been. Mm -hmm. So I thought I might as well go to North Dakota if I can get the job. Wow, that's great. And um, coming from uh, different places, um, you, as you were hired at Minot State, how was your time at Minot State? Why did you choose Minot State? And uh, what were some different things you, you liked about Minot State when you got here? Well, I chose it because it was a position uh, that I wanted to, uh, and a field that I wanted to enter. And uh, I liked it, and I liked the area, and decided to stay. And I was only going to stay two years, and then move on, you know, travel again. And, but. <clears throat> I liked it, and so that's, and I even got in, Andre, I even got into farming. Wow. And so, and uh, knew nothing about that, of course, mm -hmm. but it was interesting, and uh, so it was just a good life here. That's great. You good say, people. Yeah, good people, good life. You good even, school. You even got into farming at a good yeah, school. Yeah, about that? And uh, the, the time, it must have been a time to remember, huh? And yes. uh, tell me what you brought here. I brought my prop, and this is the uh, Minot State College band. Let's take this bands. in. Bands. Yes. Presented, uh, they made a, a time to remember, and I thought that was really appropriate mm -hmm. for this occasion right. and the year, because um, our band, uh, we had great uh, activities on campus during the 60s, the 70s, and into the 80s, and. Uh, our music department had three bands, and there were 175 in the bands. Wow, that's great. And they were invited to go to the uh, Rose Bowl Parade. They uh, were elected and selected by the governor as the first college or university mm -hmm. to be the governor's band in wow. the state. And we also went down, for example, <clears throat> to uh, illustrate their activities. Uh, they played uh, 
uh, put on a show at the Vikings game mm -hmm. in Minneapolis between the Vikings and the Baltimore Colts. Wow, and that is great. Everybody went down on the team, yes. the team and, uh -huh. and I went down as a chaperone. Then. Okay, so, yeah, uh, that's that's uh, awesome. So, so that's awesome. That, well, that was typical. Yes, yes, that's a lot of a lot of great history. A time to remember as you served mm -hmm. as dean of students here at Minot State. Again, this is uh, Garnett Cox, the former dean of students here at Minot State University. Thanks for, again. Thanks for. Uh, joining us today. She had a lot of history um, at Minot State. And speaking of history, we're going to specify about sports history. We're jumping back right to Jesse. What do you have for us, Jesse? Yeah, Andre, you know, one thing that makes history great is people. And I got a few people uh, to show and share more about in sports here. Um, so two important pieces for Minot State athletics were Herb Parker and Wes Luther. And here's a little bit about their story. This is a Minot State University centennial moment. September 5, 1947 is a significant date for MSU athletics. On this day, Minot State held its first day of football practice. Minot State had hired Herb Parker to coach football along with basketball and track. One of Parker's freshman football players was a running back from rugby by the name of Wes Luther. No one could have envisioned the impact these two men would have in molding MSU's athletic programs. Parker would serve as the coach in three sports and later become the athletic director and finally dean of men. Luther had a successful high school coaching career before returning to Minot State to coach track and basketball. He retired as the athletic director. Parker and Luther successfully led the athletic department for over 40 years. Minot State University celebrating 100 years of excellence. Now one of Minot State's most accomplished athletes is Randy Hedberg. Randy was drafted to play football for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I talked to his younger brother Rick about what he remembers. You know, I was uh, in fifth grade, <laughs> so he's he's quite a bit older than me. But uh, back then, they didn't have the the ESPN, uh, you know, full coverage of it. Uh, um, that was in 1977, so um, quite a, quite a few years ago. But it was exciting. It was, it's, uh, it was an exciting time here at Minot State. I know, and exciting. Uh, in a small town like Partial too, so yeah, yeah pretty, pretty exciting times. Now shifting back to current sports, uh, Andre and Jamie, um, this weekend, tomorrow actually, the Minot State basketball team kicks off their season. They'll be at home over in the Dome. Mm -hmm. They play South Dakota Mines, and then the football team will play Saturday. They'll be at uh, St. Cloud State. Wow, that's great. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. Now, talking more about uh, different things that are going on uh, with daily life and specifically weather. What is going on with the winter weather? It's getting kind of chilly. It's getting kind of. I think there's only one person that out. can tell us that. Yes, Chris joining us today with weather. How are you doing, Chris? Doing all right. How Hi. about you? Good, good. What do you have for us today? We'll see how we're doing. Well, I guess we'll go and look at that. I, I honestly was pretty excited with the weather today. It seemed pretty nice compared to like some of the prior yeah, days. Where it was yeah, today really definitely wasn't bad, but I got a bad notification on my phone talking about flurries. So yeah. All right. Let so me know let's, if it's true. let's go check that out. All right. <laughs> Thanks, so guys. as you can see, um, oh, I'm sorry, I nearly forgot about this. We have Minot's history. Um, actually, back in 1963, we had 54 degrees. Uh, in 1983, you know, 30 years ago today, um, 50 degrees, and then we stayed at the same in 2003. I did a little more research, though. Um, we, about 100 years ago, it was probably around the 60s, which I wish we could have had, but that's all right, though. So now, right now, we have 42 degrees, uh, which is really nice, really clear. Um, Sunrise, you'll notice this week is a little earlier, and it's uh, a little earlier in sunset as well, and that's because we went back an hour, but hey, that always happens every year. Uh, tonight, uh, expect a few flurries in Minot. Um, it's going to be mostly cloudy on the eastern end, though, um, but we will be having a little more rain and sleet happening tonight um, on the west. Uh, tomorrow, though, um, we have some issues with some of the weather we might have a little bit of snow a little bit of rain but it's not going to be too bad it's going to be 40s um, which isn't too much to complain about yet uh, but um, as we continue on throughout the night uh, we still have a little bit of some snow and sleet but mostly just cloudy um, we still got the clear night going on saturday uh, we actually will be just mostly cloudy with some sun so that'll be nice um, and we'll be in the 30s again this is pretty typical, so nothing to really complain about yet. 
Now Sunday, we stick in that 30 range, um, mid 30s, upper 30s, which will still be okay. And as we continue on, we'll go further down into the 20s um, and early younger 30s, that's okay. Um, but we have one more announcement for you. Uh, let's see. Um, we actually just got word in that there's going to be a super typhoon over in the Philippines. Um, so if your thoughts and prayers are with them, that would be great. Uh, it's something, this is supposedly the biggest typhoon ever recorded in history. So that's the final thing. Wow, thoughts and prayers go out to, to yeah. uh, everything Nobody going on. Nobody ever wants to see that. Yes. Well, uh, thank you for the update, because I know um, winter's coming inevitably, so. Absolutely, yes, it is. But thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Chris. No problem. So, wow, what a great look at uh, MSU history. It's just kind of cool to see how, I mean, Garnet Cox has been here for 50 years. Yes. You know, coming from New York and um, just how maybe my role or any of our role might play yes. into the history of Minot State. Definitely. Me, you, everything else that can go on easily. Everything is history. Every day is history. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, a great look at MSU's history, but let's go ahead and wrap it up with the song of the week. And again, we're going to look at a little bit of history here. So um, the number one song from the Billboard 100 uh, exactly 50 years ago is Sugar Shack by Jimmy Gilmer and the Fireballs. See you guys next week on MSC Inside Out. Beyond the tracks. And everybody calls it the Sugar Shack.